Well, good morning and welcome to a beautiful morning here in Cambridgeshire. Today, we're gonna to talk about an upgrade to our fence-mounted solar panels. I wanna squeeze every last kilowatt hour out of this system that I possibly can. So today, we're gonna to make an upgrade that should deliver us more efficiency. So today, we're gonna to be talking about the EcoFlow single axis tracker. Now, I should say this video is not sponsored by EcoFlow. I purchased the tracker with my own money and everything I'm about to tell you are my own views. Now, before we get into what it is, how it works, what do I think of it, let's talk a little bit about construction. Now, the kit comes in a flat pack box, um, lots of pieces of metal, lots of screws, and you really want to give yourself a good two to three hours if, like me, you're a little bit DIY challenged to put this thing together. Once you mount your solar panel on it, you're really gonna need two people to be able to lift it up into place. I'm not gonna make you sit through two or three hours of watching me put this together. So in the words of Mark Rober, cue the 20 second build montage. So what is a tracker? Well, most people are familiar with what's known as a multi-axis tracker. These are the solar panels you see that have the ability to turn left and right, up and down, to follow the sun as it tracks across the sky. Well, a single axis tracker just tracks in one axis. In this case, the panel goes up and down to make sure that the sunlight is impacting at the best possible point onto the panel. So how does the tracker work? Well, it's really quite simple. Up in the top corner there, you can see that little silver disc. That senses the amount of sunlight and can track whether the sunlight is moving up or down in relation to the sensor. Based on the information from that, it can calculate whether the sunlight is increasing or decreasing. And then it can send instructions to a motor on the back, which we'll take a look at in a moment, which can lift or lower the panel to make sure that the sunlight is coming down to the panel at the optimum angle. Now, there is a nice app for the phone that lets you either manually control it or you just put the system into auto and it will automatically track where the sun is. Now, what I can see on my screen here is we're getting about 124, 123, 124,000 lux. So right now, I have the panel in auto track mode. That means that sensor up in the top corner is looking at the two photo sensors inside and saying which is the strongest. If it's the top one, then do I need to move the panel up a little bit? If it's the bottom one, do I need to move the panel down a little bit? And once it reaches a certain threshold, it will tell the panel to automatically track and the panel will start to move. Now, rather than wait for it to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna auto track the panel. So I'm gonna push the panel all the way up now to its maximum extent of about 80 degrees. Now there is an audible alarm that you can switch on that will make the panel beep a bit like a truck when it's reversing. Um, I've turned that off because it gets right on my nerves. Now let's take a look underneath the panel. Now the system is really simple. What we have is a simple frame with a hinge at the top that hooks over the back of the fence, just like any standard fence or balcony mount for a solar panel. The way the system works is we have two gas struts exactly the same as the ones you might have in the boot of your car if you've got an automatic uh, opening and closing tailgate. These in their normal position are fully extended. So these want to push the panel upwards. And in the middle here, we have this chain. Now, anyone who has uh, an automatic Velux window or anything like this will be completely familiar with this. The way this chain works is as it unravels, it locks into place into a straight rod, which pushes the panel away. So when we actually move the panel, all we're gonna do is turn a motor inside here that will crank this chain in or out. Obviously, if it pulls it back in, it will pull the panel down. If it lets the chain out, the panel will go back up again. Now, the brains of the system is here. This little box here takes information from the solar tracker that's up here. It also has a battery inside it. 
So this system doesn't require to be connected to the mains in any way. It actually charges the battery from the solar panels during the day, and then at the end of the day, when it starts to run low, it will actually pull the panel back down and go to sleep. Now the panel itself doesn't actually move that much. It might move once or twice an hour. So the battery in here is more than sufficient to run this for days on end. Now, as you can see here, this is the photo sensor. I didn't take it off there. This is actually a second one that I have. Um, EcoFlow sent me a replacement one because the one that came in the box didn't work. I gotta say, their support has been fantastic. I put this system together, it didn't work. Within 24 hours, this arrived on my doorstep and I had a replacement. But there's two parts to this. There's the sensor itself that can track using two photovoltaic sensors inside, whether the sun is rising or, or declining. There's also these two little pins at the bottom here. These two little pins sense if there's any rain and it will lower the panel, or if the panel senses vibration because of the wind, it will also lower the panel to keep it out of the wind. So you don't end up with a big sail on your fence or your balcony. So how much extra power will this generate having this tracker? To be honest, I have absolutely no idea. But when I report back at the end of May, I'll let you know how this particular panel's been doing compared to the others. Now, the big question, will this tracker pay for itself? I'm skeptical. As I say, I paid for it with my own money. It was 299 pounds for the tracking kit. That includes the frame and everything to mount your solar panel to it. With a 200 watt panel on it, I don't think it will pay for itself. Certainly not within eight, nine year period. But at the end of the 12 months when we've used these two, uh, 220 watt panels, we'll actually replace them with 440 watt panels and we'll see what the payback period is then. So come back at the end of May and I'll let you know how they did. With that, I'm gonna sign off. I hope this short review has been useful. If anyone is interested, then hit me up in the comments and I'm happy to answer any questions you've got.